What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Trading Wars. Thanks for joining me today on this beautiful Sunday. I have a very special stream with you guys today. I'm here with Jason from Trend Spider. We're going to be talking about the raindrops. I know you guys have been going crazy for this, and uh, I really want to keep giving you guys as much tools and value that I can to help you with your trading, all right? So before we step into the war zone, uh, why don't we hit Jason with a one and welcome him to the stream. Let me go ahead and share some of you guys on the stream here with your names, give you some shout outs, and then we'll get right into it. So we have Get Real in the building. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Roop, Tyler, Ron, good to see you. Trend Spiders in the building here. Let's do this. Uh, Nell, what's going on? Wayne, Alicia, good to see you. Harris, what's going on, brother? Luca, good to see you. Wade, what's going on? All right, I see all the ones in the chat. Good, 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 good. All right, John. Hey, thanks, right. Roop. Appreciate it. Hey, so Jason's here with us, guys. Jason, why don't you uh, just give us a brief introduction about yourself and like how, how you came to get into the trading game? Yeah, sure. So um, I started trading when I found crypto in 2017. Um, got absolutely hammered because I bought the top uh, like December 2017, I believe it was. And then, you know, have been just trading everything that I can that has a chart ever since then. Um, I hooked up with Trend Spider. I got hired about two years ago, and I spent my first year and a half, year and three quarters, working on the customer success side. So doing one-on-one -on -one training sessions, answering questions live in chat Monday through Friday, um, and recently have kind of shifted to this new role, hosting events and um, writing blog articles, doing research, those sorts of things. Thank you. So what we have here, guys, is we have some slides prepared on the raindrops. So Jason is going to walk us through this. And um, the one that I focus on the most is the neutral raindrop here, the blue one. And I'm going to be showing you guys some examples of how I trade that. And I'm just going to add, uh, as we go through this, the particular ways that I trade. But I think it's important for us to start off with a, a good fundamentals, good background on this topic before we dig into it. So Jason, why don't you take it away? Yeah, sure. So raindrops are a unique to the platform feature. There is no other um, trading platform that offers this style of candle. Uh, and y if you've been trading for really any time, you're probably familiar with Japanese style candles. Japanese style candles are built from four data points, right? They have the open, the high, the low, and the close. Um, what makes a raindrop candle unique is the fact that it actually doesn't have a uh, an open or a close. It has a left and a right hand side. So the candle that we're looking at here in this picture, this green candle, you can see there's the high, there's the low of the candle, and then there's the left and the right hand side. The left hand side of the candle represents the first half of the time frame, whatever time frame you happen to be on. Uh, raindrop candles are available from the 10 minute time frame up to the weekly, maybe the monthly. I'm, I'm, I can't quite recall oh, if it's the weekly or the monthly. Um, but uh, yeah, so the left hand side represents the first half of the time frame. The right hand side represents the second half of the time frame. Those little bars that you see on either side, those are volume weighted average prices for each half of the time frame. Um, so, and then of course the the main visual component of the raindrop is the contour, right? So the left hand side, you have a little contour at the bottom there. The right hand side, you have a big contour. Uh, the contour represents volume. So the wider the contour, the more volume at that particular price level, the thinner the contour, the less volume. So it's a volume. You can see the volume that occurred on each half of the time frame. And then because you have the volume weighted average prices on either side, if the volume weighted average price increases from the first half to the second half of the time frame, you get a green candle. If the volume weighted average price decreases from the first half to the second half of the candle, you get a red candle. And then if the volume weighted average price remains the same, like what Rich likes to trade, um, we get a blue candle. That blue candle essentially is representing indecision. You have to figure that generally speaking, if you, and we'll look at some examples here soon, generally speaking, a candle is gonna be either red or green. Price is going to gain or it's going to lose from the first to the second half of the time frame. That's just, con I mean, that's that's pretty standard. Um, what isn't as common is the average price that's paid to remain the same over the course of the candle. 
this becomes even less common as you get into the larger time frames. So the bigger time frame you get into, the more volume you're talking about and the odds of price increasing or de decreasing or average price increasing or decreasing over the course of the time frame become uh it's just more common. So um, these blue raindrops are really interesting because they represent uh, indecision in the marketplace. You got to yep. figure a name, a big name. Let's let's just use Apple as an example. Apple's trading millions and millions of shares per day. If the average price that's paid from the first half of the day to the second half of the day remains the same, that is kind of odd. That's kind of rare. And, and that just essentially means that on that particular day or on that particular time frame, the market was indecisive. Um, yep. So we like to we like to use these for lots of different reasons, right? We like to see where the volume is on the candle. Um, we like to compare them to your standard Japanese candle. The standard Japanese candle has no volume data. So Although it's interesting to look at and, and it's telling you something very important, it's you're missing that volume piece. Yeah. And um, let me jump in real quick here, Jason. And that volume part is the key that I know a lot of people love trading volume. And uh, you're literally killing two birds with one stone here. You have your candle and your volume. And where I really find an edge with these raindrops is the neutral part, like Jason was saying. And the reason is because of rarity. Most people, when they trade, they have a problem with overtrading, especially beginners. Uh, they want to trade and trade and trade and trade, but they don't look for their edge. They don't wait patiently for that edge. And um, the neutral raindrop, especially from the daily and the weekly timeframes, which we're going to show some examples later, are, are, is so rare that you can build a trading plan around that. You can back test it. You can really uh, determine if, it's, if it has an edge or not. And um, the, the one way I like to do it is the triggers. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But um, definitely this neutral raindrop, guys, something to really, really look for on your charts. I po That's why I've been posting it, because I feel like there is a significant edge there. Um, all right. Back to you, Jason. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so three main ways to look at it. We can view the volume flow, like it says. Um, we can view volume flow around resistance and support zones. That's kind of interesting, too. Uh, knowing where volume is in relation to a particular support or resistance area. Is volume above it? Is volume below it? Um, these can these can help guide us in where we think price might be headed. Um, and then looking for discrepancies between the candle colors and the raindrop colors. Again, the volume weighted average price is what's determining whether a raindrop candle is red or green, not the open or close. So sometimes we're going to see divergences. We're going to see instances where the Japanese candle is red and the raindrop candle is green. We're going to see instances where the Japanese candle is green and the raindrop candle is red and so on. Um, so, you know, you you can use these for kind of lots of different um, uh decision-making processes, I guess. Yeah. I think that discrepancy you touched on is really key. I didn't even think about that. Um, that's something that I'm going to look into, but having a Japanese candle close red and then seeing the volume actually in these candles be green, showing the increase in volume at a higher price. Right. That's definitely a major divergence. So that's something we'll note down here with the trading wars team guys, make sure you write that down. We're going to look into that. Um, uh, but yeah, discrepancy for sure is always good because it's rare in itself as well. Anything that's rare, anything that has an edge is where we want to focus our time uh, because we can scan through, like I will show you guys later, we can scan for raindrops every day. And uh, instead of um, ch instead of running around chasing things at highs or, or at lows, why don't we wait for some consolidation with these raindrops and then look to take those plays instead? Um, and that's kind of where I focus. All right. All right. So back to you, Jason, here. I know you had two examples here. This one is Apple. So yeah. it's a little bit different than how I use them, but why don't you go ahead and talk about this? Yeah, for sure. So this is Apple from essentially January last year until a couple of days ago. I think I sent this to you middle of last week. Mm -hmm. So it's missing a couple of days of price action, but that's okay. Um, essentially, the idea here is to note where the blue raindrops are occurring because we, we're, we're focusing in this particular instance on the blue ones. Um, so we have that big drawdown at the top of last year. We come into this consolidation phase. It's just kind of the first orange box on the far left-hand side of the screen. 
green. Yep. So we come into this consolidation period or this uh, accumulation period, I guess we would say. And then right at the end of the accumulation period, we start seeing blue raindrops. And what those blue raindrops are saying is they're saying that the market is indecisive. When a market is indecisive, what that oftentimes will lead to is price discovery. And the reason why is because when a market is indecisive, price is not really moving that much, right? The And when the price is not moving that much, nobody's really in control, right? Neither neither bulls or bears. Um, nobody's really in control. Uh, nobody's really making any money when that's the case. So market makers will see this kind of stagnation and then they'll push price in one direction or another. I mean, we're coming off of a big move to the downside, right? And we're accumulating, we're, we're forming an accumulating pattern that the, the the natural idea here would be price would probably push to the upside, um, but you don't really know when that's going to occur. The blue raindrops are a signal that, hey, this consolidation phase that's, phase going, that's going, on going on is kind of starting to, it, it, it might be about to end. And that's exactly what happens. It does. It pushes to the upside, right? And then we form a distribution period. Right at the end of the distribution period, what do we get? We get a blue raindrop, and then we break down to the downside. Another distribution period, blue raindrop, and then we make that big move to the upside into that flag, that triangular pattern around around August or so, somewhere between July and August. Yep. Um, and then a nice consolidation there with multiple blue raindrops. And he sent like... Whenever I see multiple blue, rain, multiple blue raindrops in a very tight area uh, in a short amount of time, um, that just leads me to believe that the market is very, very indecisive. And uh, I'm, I expect kind of more extreme volatility when that's the case. And volatility, again, can go either direction. And, and look what happens out of that wedge pattern, out of that little flag pattern you have a pretty extreme volatility in both directions, right? You have this big upside move followed by a rip to the downside, followed by a rip back to the upside. And then you have, you know, you're around September or so, another consolidation period, an accumulation period. It, it, what these blue raindrops tend to do is they tend to mark the beginnings and the ends of phases. And, it, you know, if you trade price action, you know that really there are only three major phases. There's accumulation, there's distribution, and then there's the, the move in between those two, right? Um, so we just, we tend tend to see these things at the beginnings and the ends of these phases. So exactly. if you know if you know what phase you're in, if you're in an accumulation phase and then you start seeing blue raindrops, you can start thinking about maybe this thing's going to move to the upside and I want to get ahead of this. If you're in a distribution period and you start seeing blue raindrops, you might start thinking, "Hey, I might this might be starting to get ready to move to the downside. Um, so that's kind of how I personally yeah. will use them. Um, I'm always, I, I, I personally very rarely will have just the raindrop candles on my chart all day. Um, I trade price action. So I'm kind of looking at uh, the Japanese candles most of the time. But whenever I feel like we're at an, a, a level of interest, whether it be support or resistance, I'm going to flip over to the raindrops and see, are we starting to form these indecision, these blue raindrop candles? If we are, um, that's going to give me quite a bit more confidence in my idea, whether it's taking a long or a short bias trade. Perfect. And to just jump in there, guys. So from the way that I look at this, guys, is uh, more for that intraday day trade. And I'm here right here on Netflix. So this is actually one that we tweeted on on Friday. We had this blue raindrop right here. And um, what I, uh, the way that I want to make you guys think about it, it's definitely indecision. That's first and foremost. Um, because imagine that we traded for the whole day and uh, the volume weighted average price is basically the same. So, you know, it, that from the morning to the end of the day. And um, that means that someone's going to be trapped tomorrow. If we gap up, if we gap down, then all of a sudden somebody that was holding a short, if we gap up, is going to be in danger. Or if we start to penetrate and break through the high and the low of the range, we can start trapping traders that were indecisive. Now we have stop losses being run. So the way that I trade these is exactly the same way that we trade an inside bar. So that's the way that I like to look at it, but it's not an inside bar. That's what makes it so beautiful. 
it could it doesn't have to be an inside bar to be a blue raindrop and it gives us another edge another way of trading in the market so i want to walk through netflix here with you guys hit me with a five if you're having a good time and if you like the information now we're going to drill down right here to the 10 minute chart right now um here we go okay so again we start off with the blue raindrop we know what does that mean it means going into friday for netflix that we're indecisive okay we don't know what we're going to do so what's the simplest way to, to take advantage of that type of scenario? We take a break above and a break below. We don't know. It's going to break to the upside or to the downside. Nobody knows. But we can take the trade either direction. Okay, so my long play here, let me see if I can find this. Um, we got to go back in time here, guys. I'm going to pull this up right here. It's right around here somewhere. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. So here was the Netflix play, okay? So here was the call out on March 10th. You could see here the 350 puts, they went from six to 12. Very, very simple using these triggers here. So 364, 356. So why did I do that? Okay, so here is the 10 minute chart so we can see it a little bit clearer. So it's 364, I was looking for literally just a break above this price point here, this resistance. And the 356, I was front running the low. So here's the actual low. But I wanted to get in a little bit before the low so we could get a better risk reward. All right. So what I like to do with the raindrop is say, okay, yesterday we're consolidating. Today I'm going to take the break. So we we trigger to the downside. We break 356, get filled here, short shares, options, whatever you want to do. And um, the puts, like I said, went for double easily. Could have been a lot more, but I'm being conservative there. And that's how I like to take advantage of that. Um, another one that I had here that I want to show you guys was NVIDIA. So you can also do this on the weekly. So this is when I really started getting involved with the blue raindrops is when I started to see um, these patterns develop and actually work on a higher time frame. So with NVIDIA, what you're going to see here, I think I'm lagging on my end. Uh, I don't know why I've been lagging, but we have a, we're going to see two raindrops, okay? Two blue raindrops. One happened recently, and then there was one before. Am I, there we go. So this is the first time that I started playing around with these raindrops here. We went through this together on Twitter. Okay, so we did this one together. So it's the same pattern here, guys. So we have the raindrop, break below here, short, break above, go long. That's the easiest way. We, we know we could drill down. We go to five-minute chart. On Actually, if we go to the hourly chart, you'll see that there was a double inside bar near the lows. So that's how we got full advantage of this play. But just looking back on this, right, just look at this with me, okay? There's not much. But when they do happen, the conclusion of it usually leads to a move, okay? It's not going to happen all the time. But you know and I know if we have a two-to-one risk to reward, how many trades out of 100 do we need to win? Tell me in the chat right now. That's what we're looking for, okay? We're looking for 34, 3, 4, 34. We're looking to win 34 out of 100 trades. And this is going to help you focus. Focus on an edge. Stop over trading. This is why I brought this to your attention today, all right? And... um. All right, let's get back to Jason. I know you have one more example here. So let's take a look at um, these two here. Yeah, I mean, CVX is is a pretty clear one, right? Like you have, there, there's just a couple of things to note. You have that first accumulation period kind of look like it was distribution. And then we get to the very, very tail end of it. And what happens? Blue Doji, extension to the upside. Again, another what appears to be a distribution phase. Blue Doji extension to the upside and then just the other day it hit i'm not sure if it's an all-time high but it's definitely a multi-year high um yeah. right at a multi-year trend level kind of where you would expect price to pause i mean clear signal that that there was indecision right price price got to a huge level and the market was like uh what should we do now do we keep going higher do we not keep going higher lots of people probably buying and lots more people probably selling from a previous you know people mm -hmm. who had held from previous lower areas um never ever a surprise to see a blue doji in a spot like that uh it's just so, so common to get that big indecision at a big level. Uh, and the next day you have a move to the downside. Now it has since consolidated sideways. Um, it's, I don't know if it's distributing or accumulating for the next move to the upside. it will be interesting to see kind of where this one goes over the coming weeks, but that was a very clear and honestly, like I kind of expected that blue 
Doji to be there that day, um, just because it was such a pivotal level. And just so often at these pivotal levels, you see this big indecision. Got it. Yeah. And let's go back here and let me speak a little bit about the scanners. So what I do here, guys, is I, there's a blue Doji raindrop scanner. Okay. Um, in Transpider. So you can, you can scan on the daily, the weekly, uh, depends on the plan you have, I believe. But I run this scan. I just hit that refresh right there. I run this scan on a daily basis. And I just look if I see any names, like I already posted MasterCard, Facebook, Cat. Those are threes that I'm watching because um, I, I normally trade those. So, and if we just click on it here, we can go here, Facebook right here or Meta platform, whatever they want to call themselves these days. <laughs> um, we had this little double bottom, uh, double bottom blue raindrop. Okay. And uh, the scanner is key. In, in my opinion, I, I find a, I find it really, really helpful, saved me a lot of time than, you know, looking through these manually. And, um, I definitely would recommend that if you guys are interested in this, get the scanner, it can save you a lot of time. And, um, I guess, uh, Jason, can you talk about that? How, how can, uh, people get access to the scanner? Like what plan do they need? And, um, and, and all of that. Yeah, sure. So we have three subscription tiers on the platform, premium, elite, and advanced. Uh, on the premium plan, you can utilize the scanner, but you can only scan down to the daily time frame. So you can scan for all kinds of different things, price conditions, indicator conditions, candlestick pattern conditions, uh, earnings, all kinds of stuff. Um, but only down to the daily time frame. So if you want to scan smaller time frames, you need to be signed up for either the elite or the advanced plans. Both of those plans can scan down to the one minute time frame. Perfect. And guys, I have my own discount code with Transpider in the description. So if you want to, you know, go ahead, you can definitely check that out. Um, I also got my swag box from Trendspider. I actually came on the weekend. So awesome. I'm going to have to take a picture of that and post that. Um, and I'm actually talking uh, about bringing my uh, other indicators onto Trendspider pretty soon. So I'm really happy with Trendspider. I think these type of edges are very important for our community, guys. Less is more in this game. Focus is everything. And uh, when you trade long enough, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. You don't want to get burnt out. You don't want to be overwhelmed. You want to have a very structured, simple approach that you repeat over and over and over again. Um, and why don't we open it up to any questions right now? If anybody has any questions they want to ask Jason or myself, please go ahead and comment in the chat. And uh, we have about eight minutes here. So we'll take a few questions. We'll wrap it up, guys. And then I'll do uh, some of my giveaways and and uh, we'll, Jason will be um, tuning off there. But uh, thank you again, Jason, man. Really appreciate this. It seems a little bit complicated for people that have just looked at it for the first time, but I think you did an excellent job explaining it. Uh, it made a lot, lot of sense to me. And um, I really, I really want to thank you for your time. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And for anybody who has any questions, um, just at any time, if you're a Transpider user and you have questions, even if you're not a Transpider user, we have live people in chat Monday through Friday, about 20 hours per day, and on the weekend, about eight hours per day. And these people are there to answer your questions. If you have questions about the platform, hit that contact us button in the bottom right hand corner of Transpider.com. And just ask whatever questions you have. If you're a user and you want some more understanding of how to utilize these candles, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one training session. They're free for any of our users. You get 45 minutes with one of our trainers. I was one of those trainers for the past almost two years. Um, the guys are great. They're all really knowledgeable and can really help you. Uh, you know, If you need help building scanners, you need help understanding this or that thing on the platform. Um, do not hesitate to, to ask those questions and then even go the step further with signing up for the one-on-ones. They can be super, super helpful and they're free. There's no reason not to take advantage of all of that. Perfect. And um, also, here's another one that caught my, caught my mind recently. Where we had Amazon with this uh, beautiful flush. Uh, I remember uh, calling this one out. So also remember, guys, that on a weekly basis, I post my top blue raindrops. So you can always, you know, if you just want to start off and learn a little bit more and follow it for a little bit, check out my Twitter and follow the tweets I do on the weekends. They have my top weekly raindrops going into the next week. 
So I see here we have a few questions. Jason, do you use other indicators to predict accumulation versus di distribution phase, or do you have to wait for an eventual break up or down? So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, so I certainly have over my years. Um, I have turned a lot of them off because I've personally been really, really focused on just trading price action. Um, but you can use all kinds of things. I mean, um, I, one common thing that I definitely have done quite a bit in the past is just paying attention to like a, a set of moving averages, um, looking at different length moving averages and watching for them kind of, you know, if you're in an uptrend and then they all start rolling over and kind of coinciding and, and intermingling with one another. That's, you know, that's one way of looking for that. Uh, as far as like predicting accumulation distribution, try not to make any predictions about anything. I try and let price kind of lead the way. But mm -hmm. you can you can certainly utilize lots of different tools on the platform to find those areas, um, be it maybe the range tool. Like you could find, you could use the scanner to find price breaking out of a tight range over, you know, and that range could have been occurring for the past 30 days or something. You know, you can, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about finding those, those areas or those patterns, those accumulation or distribution patterns. It's just a matter of choosing the tool that you want to use because lots of tools are going to be able to do it. It's just kind of picking the one that makes sense to you. Perfect. Uh, I see a question here from our brother Nell. Your golden indicator script is for use on what platform? Trading Wars Army. Yeah, so I am uh, working on getting those into Trend Spider pretty soon. So uh, just stay tuned. Uh, more coming up in the next few weeks, and hopefully we can get the golden indicators out there. Um, they, that's going to be awesome. And uh, Tragus, I see. Can you explain the 127 topping pattern? How do we know when it's a top versus just an extension? I'm not sure, brother. Uh, the 127 topping pattern, what you're asking. But in terms of a top versus an extension, I'll tell you this, you never know. So that's why it comes down to risk management, right? If you're wrong, you got to cut your losers. If you're right, you got to let it run. So I always take a bar by bar approach. Like let's say here, we take this raindrop on Amazon. Uh, we got to get at least one bar out of it. And if we don't, and it turns around, we take a stop. And uh, that's just the easiest way to deal with it because nothing's going to be 100% accurate. Um, and thanks for going over the blue raindrop trading strategy. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. All right. So there we go. So we finished on time. We have three minutes left. I'm going to send Jason off here into the sunset. Thank you so much again for being here, brother. This was great. I hope to have you on in the future. We could talk about different things with trend spider, you know, whatever the people want to hear about. Um, you know, we're going to keep adding value to everybody. That's what we, what we do here at trading wars. So thank yeah. you so much. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for having me. If anybody has any questions about anything, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or anything like that. Happy to answer any questions as you guys have them. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's, let me just get you. So what's your uh, Twitter handle here? Let's just let me post it in the chat here so everybody can. Yeah, it's at Jason Kretzky. It's just at my name. OK, perfect. OK, that's simple enough. Yeah. All right. OK, so thank you so much, Jason, again. And uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Cheers. Yeah, man. You too. Thank you. And and everybody that tuned in, thanks for being here and hope you guys have a great uh, and profitable trading week. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye. Boom. There we go. So we had Jason. What an amazing guy here to explain with us. Education is power, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, and we're going to keep having Trend Spider on here to keep sharing some more info. Trend Spider, let's shout them out. Thanks for having us, Rich. We'll have to get back for another chart request soon. Yes, we will. Thank you so much. You guys take care. Appreciate you guys. Yes. All right, guys. So there we go. Those are the blue raindrops. Many people have been asking me about them. Um, I definitely think there's an edge there. And uh, you want to be trading them on the names that usually have a lot of volume because it makes more uh, of an impact, right? If you're trading something that has a lot of volume and all of a sudden the the, the average volume is, is stuck in a, in, in a range, then that means that there's something special happening here. But if you're trading stocks or, or instruments that have very light volume, this is probably not as relevant, okay? And uh, so what I want to do here now is I just want to go ahead and do a, a giveaway. And uh, two giveaways, I'm going to do one for the Trading Wars Army, just to thank you guys for all the support. And we're going to do one from one of the YouTube videos recently, and then we're going to wrap it up and just call it a night. I already did the spy recap yesterday. We had nine winners and three losers this week. So check that out if you want to see more about spy. 
Um, but hey, let's do the giveaway right now. Hit me with a drum roll and let's get right into this. So let me go to the YouTube and let me pull up a video here. Boom. So we have. And yeah, guys, man, I really, I really hope you enjoyed that. I mean, I really think there's something, something there. There is definitely something there and I've used it before. I feel like I need to refine it just a little bit more for my style. But I think the breakout method is very, 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 very um, straightforward. All right. So I'm on the how to trade spy for a living. Perfect day. No losers. This was the Friday video. So we have 43 comments. So I'm going to do a random number generator right now. And we're going to pick somebody here. Random number generator. One to 43. So again, thank you for those who commented. Um, generating now, number 23, okay? So thank you for those who commented. You always have a chance to win. So I always encourage you guys to, to uh, comment, okay? It helps me out. It helps the algorithm. You know what it is, okay? So here we go. Number 23. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two, three. So Steve D. Thank you, Rich. Great review of Orb. Thank you, brother, for your comments. So we have Steve D in the building. You won the giveaway, brother. You get one month for free in the room and a copy of a book of your choice. So please hit me up on the Twitter. We'll verify your YouTube and uh, we'll get you all set up, man. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate that. All right. So now let's do um, let's do one for the army. And I'm going to give you guys some time still if you want to enter for the army because there's only like 100 people in there or less. So you have a good chance of winning, right? It's better than um, better than going to the casino, guys. I'm giving you good odds here. So um, let's go ahead. Let me see how much members we have. And what I want to do is I want to spend a little bit of time talking on trading psychology in the meantime because I know a lot of people have been asking me about that over and over and over and over again, okay? So I'm going to um, go ahead and, and speak on that a little bit, okay? So let me just go ahead here and see the army members here. So we had a new army member today. Uh, Nell, thank you very much, brother. Appreciate that. So we have a total of uh, how many members? 88 members. Okay. So I'm going to, oh, sorry, 90 members. So I'm going to leave this open a little bit and then we're going to go from there. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave this open just a little bit. All right. So back to the charts, back to you here. Let's do this. Um, where can I use the golden indicators in the meantime? You just need to go uh, to trading view. So here, let me post it up for you right here. Boom. Here are the trading wars golden indicators. All you have to do here is just click add to favorites, and then it'll be in your favorites on the chart. You just click indicators and add favorites. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's talk about this a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go into the discord because I want to show you guys an example of, you know, going through a losing streak. Okay, so here we go, my live commentary. All right, so here's one of the uh, spreadsheets. So this is actually real trades with real money here um, that uh, my brother is actually doing. He's using the 618-786 morning leg. This is a Fibonacci-based system, okay? So just want to show you how trading really is, okay? This is the reality of trading. If the people that are telling you every day they're making a 1,000, they're making a million, whatever, that is not going to happen, guys, because the market is not... It's not that easy. If it really was that easy, then everybody would be rich. So this is what you're going to expect in trading here. Okay. So check this out. So this is from March 2nd to the 11th. You can see right off the bat, four losers in a row lost about $373 and then just came back on the fourth and basically broke even. Okay. And then from there, guys, watch this now. One, two, three, four, five, six losers in a row, losing a hundred bucks each. So at this point, from March 2nd to March 9th, down $600 on the account and feel like defeated, want to give up. But you know, deep down inside, if you have your back testing done correctly, and if you've been trading long enough, you know that the market is going to, it's, it's cyclical. You have win, winning streaks and losing streaks. Okay. Honest question. How many of you guys right here after this, you're down 600 bucks on your small account. Okay. This is a small account. So you're only using a hundred dollars a day for your losers. Okay. That's your, that's what your risk is. How many of you right here would have given up? Hit me with a one and let's be honest. Okay. Hit me with a one. If you would have given up, hit me with a two. If you would have just kept going. All right. And, um, that's, that's, you know, that affects me. It affects my brother. It affects, 
you know, any, anybody, right? Like you're doing everything you need to do. Okay. You're taking the trades, you have the setup, it looks good. You're doing everything you need to, and you're still losing money. So how do you deal with that? You got to keep trading. You have to keep trading. That's why I always say do 100 trades. I keep telling you guys do 100 trades of a strategy, then evaluate. You don't have to risk real money. Do paper trading, do 100. Okay. Then evaluate. Is it actually making after 100 trades, you should be able to see a clear trend. Am I making money or not? Is this really working or not? What's the win rate? What's the risk to reward? And then check this out now, March 10th and 11th, literally Thursday and Friday, um, 200 bucks, 430, 1100, 200 and 416. All right. Wiping away all of the losers and now back up to positive 20 R. All right. So this is what it really looks like. So when you look, when you have your logs, when you have your trading logs, you got to see that you got to see losing streaks and winning streaks. That's how you know that you're trading because that's what's going to happen. Okay. And what the key is here is the winners. Notice the winners are always bigger than a hundred bucks. You guys see that? The winners are always bigger than a hundred bucks. And that's what keeps you alive. Hit me with a seven. If that makes sense. Hit me with a seven. All right. Okay. Last chance to join the Trading Wars Army. If you guys haven't done it already, you're going to do the giveaway right now. So hit me with a seven, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm offering you guys this. Have your log. Do 100 trades. I'll look at it. I'll take a look at it for you. No, no problem, guys. I'll, I'll try to help you. We'll take one of them and we'll do a stream about it. And I'll break it down. I'll say, look, the risk to reward is not good or the setup could be better. This and that. I, I could help you guys with that but you got to do the work. You have to be willing to actually go through the process, take those trades and not give up. That's why I paper trade in the beginning, because if you're trading with money, you can't lose, then just work on the fundamentals and the basics and building your confidence through paper trading. Okay. All right, let's do this. So we have 90 members. Like I said, we're going to do another random number generator here. Boom. I already have one up there. My bad. So let's do this right now. Number one, two, 90. Here we go. 85. Oh, okay. So number 85. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. Here we go. I'm going to take a screenshot here of this brother right here. Colorado Blue. Thank you, brother. Joined seven days ago, and my brother is getting a free book and one month for free in the room. So join the army, guys, if you can. It's $4.99 a month. Good stuff. you got a giveaway every single week. So congratulations, Colorado Blue. I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you very much. And, um, guys, I'm just going to tell you right now that my focus moving forward is going to be a lot more on YouTube uh, because, you know, Twitter, it's full of scammers. It's, it's tough. It's tough. It's really tough to get your to get your message out there. There's a lot of trolls, a lot of scammers. Like the scammers have really damaged the Twitter community because like no matter what you tweet, there's always 10 imposters that are saying, hey, um, they're saying, hey, you know, go join my Telegram, blah, blah, blah. And it's really destroyed the community. And I don't know if it's going to get better from that from here on, but I really want to focus more on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button. I have so much planned for you guys. I have Data Warrior coming on. I have uh, Sarah coming on. I have a lot of people coming on. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Okay. All right. Uh, when you take a trade, how do you manage not to stare at it? You just have to put in your stop loss and your target and walk away. Like literally go, you got to walk away. You go to the gym, go outside, do something different. Get yourself away from trading. Understand that your strategy, once you maximize your strategy, you got to let it do its thing. You can't be the person to sabotage your own results. Okay. And always remember that. So, Hey, Thank you so much for your time. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave a comment if you did. Okay, I'm going to end the broadcast here. Leave a comment and just let me know, did you enjoy this? Was this helpful to you? If you want to know more about the blue raindrops, I might partner here with TrendSpider and create a little booklet for you guys. Something like, hey, a step-by-step -step guide. Like, hey, this is how I do the raindrops. I scan, I do this, and then I go in here and I set my levels, and then I automate my trades, stop limit orders conditional orders for options. If you want something that detailed, hit me with some support and I'll, I'll work with them and we'll make it happen for you. Okay. So don't forget to comment. And if you comment, you have a chance to win a giveaway. That's, that's also a benefit. Okay.
Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. You take care.